What's going on YouTube? It's Ram from Team Arsenal back with another video and today we have my top four Skyshaker DPE deck profile from this past um, Friday at Locals. So before we get into it, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe because the time to record this video, we have activated our 250 subscriber giveaway. So stay tuned for that video after this one and um, let's get right into it. So our matchups for today, um, round one, we played against Pure Thunder Dragons, really threw me for a loop, but unfortunately for him, it was an easy win, 2-0. Um, round two, we played against some kind of, I want to say good warrior dot deck, good warrior toolbox or something else like that. Um, it's like Phantom Knights, Infernobles, everything was in the deck. I think it's like a 60 card warrior or something like that. But um, I kid you not, his first, his first, uh, our first game, when he went first, he set up a Baroness, Arclight, um, the, their level nine synchro for uh, Inf Infernobles, um, Savage, and then on top of that, he had protection what, with Apples as well with, with two negates. And he had protection for his, um, he had the Oliver as well as the other um, other Infernoble that you would link and that you uh, equipped to the Synchro where he can be targeted destroyed by card effects. And he also had a, um, a quiz spell to it where it says, no other cards on their opponent, on, on my, on their opponent's side of the field can be targeted except for said monster that is equipped to, but he couldn't be targeted. So it was like a soft lock against targeting. And which for this deck, that's automatic GG. Um, we ended up losing that one. We, we won the second game. Then game three, it came down to Willie. We was close to time. It was like less than two minutes left. It was 7,500 life points to my 800. And we just had to basically just go in DPE, um, pop, activate its effect in battle phase, pop the field spell for Sky Strikers to summon out Ray, Ray swing, then tag out Ray for a, um, Kagari. Kagari, since we, it was later in the game, we had crept on the spells in the grave, swing again, and then basically just... Try to set up a board where it's like, yeah, you have to break my board and pass or pass turn because you have like two cards in hand and we have like 50 seconds left. So, uh, but that one was scary, but we ended up winning that one, uh, 2 1. And then we played round three against uh, Flunderies at table table one because we, cause we had won the last game at table two. Um, we got clean and swept on that one. Uh, hands were not the most optimal and, um, when Flunderies are allowed to go off with no type of responses, that's just basically GG. Um, so yeah, we lost that one to uh, O2. And then we actually came back in round four and actually 2 would another Flunderies player because we just had enough Flunderies at that point. Um, so we ended up getting fourth place, X1. So let's get into deck profile. Uh, I'll show you. you can see our prizing here, our DPS, I uh, said DPS, <laughs> our OTS packs, which will be opening up later this week. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, let's start off with the main deck. So for the monster lineup, we are playing Triple Ray and Double Rose for our Sky Strikers or, uh, as far as monsters. Um, don't want to play three rows. It's cloggy. I don't I Personally, I do not care for rows. Rose is like literally just my backup Ray. Um, if I had the option, I always want Kagari or Hornet Drones because uh, Rose is just a, a way to get me there. Uh, nothing more for me because I never use the actual graveyard effect. Um, I did use a special summoning stuff effect like twice, which I actually came up to, for me to get into a Verte Anaconda. So that was cool, but now that I don't really care for it, we, I shouldn't have to explain Ray. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with the, the five instead of the six. The six is kind of cloggy because you already have Terraforming. You have... Um, Air Zero, you have Hornet Drones, you have Rota. So, I mean, how, how many rays do you need? <laughs> and then uh, for other monster, are not hand traps, we're just playing the two bricks for our DPE engine. And then the last monster we play is Effect Failure. We only play like six hand traps in this deck, so, and it's um, Effect Failure and Infinite Permanence. I chose those for the most impactful hand traps to me against uh, the current format. Um, they can't chain block you with an effect that are in your hand because um, it just goes strictly target that monster. It doesn't have to be a part of a chain like Ash or anything like that. So against Flundery, Sorcel, etc., it's pretty solid hand traps. Um, they got crossed up, they got crossed up. A lot of people are not really playing crossed up right now, surprisingly. So 
Yep, and that's it for the monsters, 10 monsters in total. We're gonna move on to the non sky striker spells that we play. Um, triple Fusion Destiny, another starter in the deck, that's why we play it. Um, saved my butt so many times, like uh, round, round uh, four, I guess the Fundry's player, he had one first in game two. He had set up um, Ravria Warlords with two set and some other card, I forgot what the other card was. And he uh, actually, he cherry, cherries me and got banished out of my Kagaris. And um, basically trying to lock me out of Sky Striker plays and I just literally had the Raid plus the Fusion Destiny. So I just went Fusion Destiny, slide down DP. And that literally handled two, like his back row as well as the uh, rivalry. So I left him with like basically one back row card. Um, and I just basically had the Ray and the DPE just literally went to more and more advantage from there. Um, so basically just to say that literally DPE just literally handles a lot of mess by itself. So it has to be played in this deck. You also play a triple Lightning Storm. We're basically, we're basically a blind second deck. We just want to go second, try to break boards the best we can. So we don't really care about the um, functionality of this card because it's, it's going to come up. People do not play around it. Um, games game one. Um, then we're playing double droplet. If I had a third one, I would play it. Uh, let's just be honest, I don't have a third one. Um, and then we also have uh, double tactics talents. Um, this card actually did some work today, surprisingly. Um, I went up against Zeus's um, full a uh, full board by um, sixty card warrior. I'm gonna just call it sixty card warrior. Um, and literally this helps me break the board by snatching our monsters, whatever case may be. Like I literally got Zeus uh, in round four. And um, he basically cleared my board because he was afraid of me going to like a, a Verte anything like that. And that's literally just ta tactics took the Zeus, Norman out of Ray, and then basically just had a Zeus and a Ray just sitting there just swinging in for heavy damage. Uh, yeah. So um, if I would change anything, I would definitely get a third uh, droplet. Uh, Tactics is way better than I thought it would be, surprisingly. Um, then there are one of spells that are non Sky Striker spells. We have Dark Blue No More because we only have um, two droplets. That's why we play that. Call by Mystic Mine, Rhoda, Terraforming, and Upstart Goblin. Um, yeah, just utility spells. And then for our Sky Striker spells, we're playing Triple Widow Anchor, Double Shark Cannon, one Afterburner, one Area Zero, one Ego Booster, one Hornet Drones, one Multi Roll, one Engage. Uh, lineup was perfect. Can't really complain about it whatsoever. That's it for spells. And then for our traps, we're literally just playing, like I told you guys, for three Hip Nine Permanents. Now, truth be told, um, I would probably play more hand traps if I could. Probably like Ash or something like that, something that just genetically covers everything. But um, I'm gonna get to later details about everything else in a little bit because I don't want to run too long. We're gonna move to the extra deck for the Sky Strikers. Um, triple Kigari, Triple Shiz, Double Hayate, One Kaina, and One Zeke. Uh, we only have space for two high attacks, so but we only play two of it. But it, the third one doesn't really come up. Um, can't complain about it. Now, now that I know how the ratios for Sky Strikers play, if I do play Sky Striker Orcus, I have to play more Sky Strikers now because like this is it, it was so much more easier to play and less restricting. It's so free at that point because um, yeah, you burn through a lot of them, but having so many, it just the recursion and the follow up and everything like that is it, it's, it's, it, it feels great to have so much to work with. And then for the um, non sky Trigger links, we have um, Phoenix, Verte, Nagirsu, Axis Cove. Just board breakers, um, get get around uh, Dragoon. Um, people do not play around this, they do not see it coming. This is literally just to play against IO and stuff like that. You are, this is self explanatory and Axis Code, Axis Code. So I have to explain that in the last extra deck monster is obviously the boy, DPE. Uh, you would think it was a lot more restricting with him having him in your uh, main monster zone while I activate Sky Striker spells, but the, I learned that the trick from, um, shout out to my boy Keenan Knox. Uh, the trick to it is basically just, you set up X amount of spells and have hand traps, and then you set up the DPE with a Sky Striker uh, link, and you basically just go from there. You don't, you don't fully commit to the board when you have DPE up, 
you basically let DPE do most of the work for you. And then when you get to the point where you're actually close to killing them, you just DPE can just disappear from there. It doesn't really matter. You're just trying to end the game. Um, and then for the side deck, we're playing um, Triple Lantia, Triple Droll, Triple Nib, Triple Cosmic, and Triple Solemn Judgment. Um, the reason I play the ratios like this is the fact that I wanted to actually see my hand traps and stuff like that. And the fact that like if I when I go into games two and three, I try to side side with my deck to have it where it's like it's hand drop, it's heavy on hand traps. So I can actually have a versatility of going first or going second, no matter what, what my opponent chooses. Like some people like for you to go first, people like to let you go second regardless, they don't care. Um But the point is for me to take out like cards like Droplet, a Dark Luna More, Mystic Mind, Lightning Storm Limb, cards that are hard second and swap them out for hand traps so that way I can actually can play going first or going second depending on my opponent uh, my opponent chooses it because it doesn't really matter to me because I have the functionality regardless. Um, the judgment is just in case I actually actually for sure know I'm going um, going first, but it never came up for me. I might turn it into uh, TC booze or something, truth be told. Um, but yeah. That's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe again. It's been Ref Team Arsenal signing out. Peace and have a great day. Hi, guys. It's Bunny from Team Arsenal. As always, thank you for watching our videos. And always remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you, guys. Bye.